Hey y'all, today's video is going to be all about summer side dishes. I'm definitely a size type of girl. I almost always prefer them over the main course. I have just always been that way. Um, I'm going to be sharing four recipes throughout the video and all of them are intended to be made in advance. So you can make these the day before and they'll taste better the next day. So when you want to serve this, it's just going to be stress-free, hassle-free. I love that. Everything in here would be perfect to take to a cookout or even if you're staying at home you can just pull it out of the fridge and pair it with some grilled meats and you're good to go so i hope y'all enjoy the video first up one of my all-time favorite summer sides is a good cold creamy pasta salad it goes good with anything i make many different versions of this but this was honestly the best i've done yet and i found a new dressing for this that makes it the best and i cannot wait to share that with y'all so i started by boiling up a pound of rotini pasta just going by the directions on the box and now I'm gonna get some veggies and some pepperonis chopped up add a coupon on those big pepperonis they're really good I'm gonna do about half of that package of grape tomatoes because I wanted to use the other half for something else we're not a huge fan of a lot of tomatoes in our pasta salad I've got one English cucumber and then in my last video I asked y'all what should I do with these leftover roasted red peppers and I got a lot of comments about a pasta salad so that's how I'm going to use those up now, keep in mind, if there is anything in this that you do not like, you can just simply leave it out. You can add any vegetable into this and it will turn out amazing. You can do broccoli, carrots. I know a lot of people do like purple onion, um, just whatever you want. Once my pasta was cooked, I drained off the water using my colander. And anytime you're making a like cold pasta salad, you wanna rinse it really well with cold water. That's gonna keep it from sticking together and it's also gonna cool everything down so that once you add in all of these vegetables, they are not just gonna turn to mush. So I'm gonna get all of that added and I'm also gonna add in this whole container of feta cheese. I absolutely love this in a pasta salad. And y'all, here is that magical dressing. It's the Kroger brand of creamy Italian dressing. I found out about this through a TikTok and I am going to link that video in my description box so that guy can get credit. It is absolutely phenomenal. And yes, I'm using the entire bottle in this. It is like the perfect combination of mayo and Italian dressing. Amazing in a pasta salad. And I have been talking about this salad supreme seasoning for years now. It really elevates pasta salads and potato salads. It's just a great spice to keep on hand. It's salty. It's got a cheesy flavor. It's also got a little bit of a celery flavor, so it's perfect in this. As you can see, I added quite a bit, so I'm going to get a lid added on, and I'm going to set that in the fridge. I did serve this the next day, and <laughs> this might be crazy to some of y'all, but I decided to transfer it to my blue casserole dish because I feel like the color just makes it pop really well versus that like beige colored bowl. No, I don't like doing dishes, but sometimes I can be a little bit funny about how I serve stuff and... I don't usually like to serve stuff out of the same bowl I mix it in, unless it's like mashed potatoes. But anyways, I did top this with a little bit of extra salad supreme just for a little pop of color. But how good does that look, y'all? And let me tell you, it absolutely is. This has been one of my favorites since I was a little girl. I used to have it in the most basic way, just, you know, pasta, Italian dressing, cucumbers, and tomatoes. I still like it that way. But after all of these years, if I'm wanting to impress, this is how I want to do it. It is so amazing and it is just perfect after a whole day out in the sun. 
If I'm going somewhere and need to bring a dish, I love to bring a dessert. Or if I know that I'm going to have some friends come over, I want to make sure that we have a little sweet treat. So I came across this key lime poke cake and it instantly intrigued me. I am a lime obsessed. So you just start off with a white cake mix and I just simply follow the directions on the back of the box. And I'm just pouring that into a greased 9 by 13 bacon dish and I'm going to pop that in the oven. When it was done, I I pulled it out and I let it cool down for about five minutes and then I'm just going to start poking holes all over the cake and I like to do it with this little I guess it's technically a knife sharpener that comes in most like knife sets that's almost always what I use for poke cake so just several holes and now we're going to make the key lime part so to my mixing bowl I'm adding in one can of sweetened condensed milk I'm using the Kroger brand it was a dollar cheaper than the name brand and here lately I have been using more store brands because these grocery prices are scary I also added in three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and then I'm going to zest in about half of of this lime and I really love the pop of flavor that that gives and then with my whisk I'm just gonna get that mixed together real good and I'm telling y'all this filling tastes just like a key lime pie on top of a cake it is crazy good and y'all this Nelly and Joe's Key West lime juice this is my first time ever buying this this recipe called for this specific one and this is another ingredient that I couldn't wait to tell y'all about because it is just so good I did a half a cup of that and as soon as I mixed that in it started to instantly thicken so I just poured that over my cake and with my spatula, I'm just evenly spreading that over, making sure that all of that, all of the holes are covered. So once I got that to my liking, I'm going to cover it with some cling wrap and I'm going to let that sit in the fridge. You want to at least let this sit for an hour, but again, the longer the better. We actually ended up digging into this about... I'd say four hours in and the recipe does call for a homemade like whipped cream to be added over the top I'm sure that would make it even better but this was just one of those days where I needed a shortcut so I just did a tub of Cool Whip or you know the Kroger brand whip top and whatever I really like this on poke cakes because you know typically the fillings can be pretty rich so I feel like this helps balance it and kind of makes it more of a lighter cake and anytime I make a cake I always like to do this particular swirling motion to make it look a little nicer and for the final touch I'm just gonna zest a little bit more of that lime over the top I think that makes it look really nice it lets people know that it is a lime inspired cake now I'm just going to get this cut into large squares obviously if I was feeding this to more people I would cut it into smaller pieces but it's just us although I did give some away to my family I do have one small complaint and that is that that key lime pie filling is so thick it didn't really go down through the cake like a poke cake should we love the flavor of it it was a huge hit. We'd absolutely, you know, make it again. Also, I'm topping it with some lime wedges and some strawberries. But the way I'd fix that next time, I would either keep the filling the same and not poke holes in it because when you go to eat it, it's going to kind of crumble a little bit since nothing's down in those holes. Or I would substitute the heavy cream with milk to make it more runny. Either way, this is the perfect cake for summer. Something else that is a must for me at any function is some sort of dip. This is going to be a zesty Parmesan bacon dip, and I think this will be the perfect poolside snack. All you need is one cup of mayo and one cup of sour cream. My dad actually gave me that sour cream because it was about to expire. He wasn't going to use it in time, so I was glad to use that up. You'll also need one package of this zesty Italian dressing seasoning mix. That's the key ingredient. So much flavor. You also need a half a teaspoon of some red pepper flakes. I have been loving those lately. I've been putting those on everything. So good. And just a little bit of black pepper. So I'm just taking a little whisk that I'm going to use to mix everything up and I'm just using that to scrape everything off my spatula. And I'm going to give this a really good mix. You want to make sure to get that dressing broken up. You don't want it to be like in any clumps or anything like that. I also fried up six slices of bacon earlier in the day and I just crumbled that up. I'm going to add most of it to the mixture, but I'm going to say Save some for later and you also need about a third cup of shredded parmesan cheese so i'm just going to fold that on in and then i'm going to transfer it to the bowl that i'm going to use to serve it out of 
I chose this one because I knew that it would look good for serving and it also comes with a lid. So I'm just going to get that lid popped on. You want to let it chill in the fridge for at least four hours, but it definitely tastes it better the next day. So here I am serving it up. I just placed it on a wooden board. I'm topping it with some extra Parmesan cheese and the rest of that bacon. I'm doing freeze dried chives, but you could definitely do fresh chives or even some green onions. And to pair with it, I'm going to do the rest of those cherry tomatoes that I didn't use for the pasta salad. We've got some fresh broccoli and another fresh English cucumber. And my favorite was these non-dippers. I absolutely love these. We all do. And it paired so good with this dip. Here is the overall presentation. I think it looks so nice. And I love taking those non-dippers, putting some of that dip on it, and putting some of the veggies on it. It was like a mini vegetable pizza. There is so much flavor in this dip. It's cool. It's creamy. It's just something different. I highly recommend it. Lastly, I'm going to be making the viral smashed potato salad. So I have a one and a half pound bag of baby yellow potatoes. I boiled those in some salted water until they were fork tender. If you are feeding more people, you will definitely want to at least double, if not triple this recipe. This really doesn't make too, too much, but I'm getting them out of the water this way because I was wanting to boil some eggs in that same water. But now I have a parchment lined cookie sheet and I'm just spraying it with some olive oil and getting all of my potatoes dumped out. And one by one, I'm just going to smash them down using the bottom of a glass jar. And this was very easy to do because they were super tender. Kind of enjoyed it actually, although some of them are wanting to stick a little bit, but nothing too crazy. So I just continue doing that until they were all smashed and then I'm just going to spritz each potato with some of that olive oil and then I'm going to season them well with some sea salt and some black pepper. That's all the seasonings that I use but feel free to do whatever you want to there. But I did roast those in the oven at 425 degrees anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes and then when they came out I did chop them into smaller pieces. It was a little bit tricky to do because of how crispy they were so I had to turn off the camera and focus, but the rest of this recipe, I kind of just winged myself because I wasn't too like satisfied with anything that I was seeing. So I did a little less than a, um, a cup of mayo. I did a couple tablespoons of mustard. I chopped some pickles. I used the sweet and spicy ones from the famous Dave's brand, I believe. I wanted to finish those up and I did do a couple hard boiled eggs and I saw quite a few people using lemon juice and some dried dill. I did have both of those on hand, so I decided to throw that on in there, although I wouldn't typically do that for a potato salad, but I do like the addition of that for this particular one. Once I got that mixed well, I threw in those potatoes and I'm just going to fold them into that dressing that I just made. I feel like this is one of those dishes that you could serve hot or even at room temperature, but I did decide to let it chill. That way all of those flavors could penetrate into the potatoes. Um, I did transfer those on over to a small casserole dish. I ended up topping it with some extra dried dill over the top. I feel like it just makes it look nice, kind of just like with paprika with deviled eggs. I always like to top my foods with something, but I covered that with cling wrap, let it chill in the fridge, and I'm going to go ahead and say that I like my potato salad better, a lot better, but this was still a good side dish. It was definitely something different and a fun way to change it up. I was kind of conflicted at first because it's just completely different from what I'm used to, but it definitely grew on me. So let me know down in the comments if any of y'all have tried this yet and what y'all thought about it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that each and every one of y'all have the best summer.